Greetings and konnichiwa, and welcome to the Onyx Tavern. This is your host, the Barkeep, bringing you podcast 65 here at the Tavern, presented by Hirotaku.com. Well, guys, we're in for a special treat today, and I do mean special in quotations there. As oh, I, I see how it is. <laughs> as I have Raptor here with me. How you doing, Raptor? I'm doing great. It's nice to be back on the regular Tavern podcast. That way nobody can see you, right? Yeah, I don't mind people seeing me. I get to make funny faces at the camera. Yes, you do, especially when I'm not looking. Exactly. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's nice to actually have a discussion instead of just the vlogging stuff because, you know, it's just the audio stuff. I feel like we have better discussions. And, and that's the best thing about the tavern. We have so much variety. And today, as part of that variety, we are going to bring everybody a great discussion uh, or at least I hope it'll be great, on the morphing grid, and basically, what the hell is it? Yeah. Uh, so, Raptor, the morphing grid, I believe, was originally introduced uh, somewhere in Season 1, and referenced a little bit more in Season 2, as being the source of the Power Ranger powers. Yes. And pretty much has, uh, no matter what the series, Turbo, In Space, Lost Galaxy, and so forth, has been... The de facto, that's where the powers come from. It's from the morphing grid. Yes, some seasons will reference it and others won't. But the general assumption is that every Power Ranger takes power from the grid. And I don't think it's limited to just Power Rangers because morphing is a precedent in the universe. So characters like the Masked Rider, uh, even the Mystic Knights of Tiernanog, which are part of the Sabanaverse, even though they may not be in Power Rangers canon, are able we'll, to we'll, we'll morph. That. Yeah, we'll yeah. To that they're later. able to transform, and there is a method of transforming that I would say is not only available to just the Power Rangers, but yeah, available because to... of um, wow, well, I'm liking on the names. The Jungle Fury villains that could kind of morph. That that could. Oh, you mean uh, well, Daishi under Jared and Camille. Yes, I want. I so much want to say Rio and Melee, but because <laughs> consider that in Go Kaiger they had keys. Yes, but the fact is, morphing is a universal thing, an interdimensional thing, which we'll get into at a moment, which basically means one will transform from one form to another, and the way that the definition of ranger is nowadays, it's who knows what really yeah, constitutes a ranger. Let's let's talk about, though, the times that we have had the grid defined in show. Yes, and there are four major instances we want to talk about. Yeah, there have been others, but these paint either a consistent picture or, in some cases, an inconsistent picture. Now, yes. of course, the most famous one uh, that, that Linkara has been bringing up in all his videos is that Lord Zed references the Morphing Grid in Season 2 uh, as being maintained by the balance uh, between him and Zordon fighting. Now, of course, let's keep in mind, this was at a time when, again, Power was only in its second season. And... This was in continuity, a time when Lord Zed was at the height of his own power. Exactly, and he was. There was no Dark Spectre at this time. It was mm -hmm. Lord Zed was really painted as the ultimate evil in the universe. So for them to come up with this explanation that's maintained between the ultimate champion of evil, Lord Zed, and the ultimate champion of good, Zordon, kind of makes sense in context. It made sense for the time. However, at the end of Season 3, with Lord Zed's defeat... That explanation faltered. It's not so much his defeat in season three, but more about his, his change emotion. his change to good at the end of Power Rangers in space. Because Lord Zed is still around. And the way he words it is that as long as he's still in existence, because he's still fighting Zordon, even when he's in the Camper of Doom, he's still <laughs> he's still fighting Zordon. When he's part of Dark Spectre's forces, he's fighting okay, Zordon. Okay, because... I really didn't think of it as him fighting Zordon during Zeo, because he didn't do anything against Zordon. His only offensive actions, well, other than the Purse Monster, mm -hmm. were against the Machine Empire. Exactly, but I think it's more about his presence and his existence. Because I think the way that the line was probably meant to, to be said is, like, as long as one of them exists. So, let, so like... If Zordon was destroyed, they would lose their powers, much the way it was in Power Rangers the movie. Yes, yes. Uh, and if, Zor if Zed was defeated, then, well, they'd probably lose their powers, or whatever it was originally at the time. But the idea that you had these two ultimate characters, kind of like in Mortal Combat, where you yes. have, uh, like in Armageddon, you have Taven and Dagon versus Blaze. Yeah, if 
one g gains too much power, then this is... Well, well in Armageddon it was, yeah. if Taven defeated Blaze, all the combatants would lose their powers, and if Dagon defeated Blaze, uh, they would all die. So it's a similar concept. It's the idea that, you know, there's got to be some sort of balance to it. Otherwise... And, you know, similar to the light and dark side of the Force. Pretty much, you know, there, there can't be just the light side, there can't be just the dark side, there's always got to be some sort of balance. So I, I think the Morphinger was taking this kind of yin-yang approach to it, which, which makes perfect it, sense. It made sense for the time. However... As we got along in the series, the Morphin Grid's not really brought up too many other times. Yes, there's that instance later in season two about too much pink energy and all that. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I think the next significant use of it... Now, let's... Real quick, let's talk about Power Rangers in space. Yes. Because the original ending was they were all to lose their powers. That's why they demorphed, because that was the end of the series. Yes. And thus, since Zed was defeated... Of course, they would go ahead and lose their powers. I, I believe that and, was the and, original. Or just, you know, all the villains in general being destroyed. Exactly, which so again... It's like, because it supposedly killed all the evil in the universe. And if it was the end, if we had no lost galaxy, then yeah, that would have been the end of it. And we would not have this discussion on the morphing grid because, heck, Zed was because defeated, the, therefore no fight. Yeah, therefore the balance has been eliminated. Exactly. Now... Since we did continue, the next real instance we got uh, of the discussion of the Morphing Grid uh, was in Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Um, now, the thing here that's a little bit different is that it's really used as a recording device or a viewing globe, if you will. Um, because Tommy uses it in Legacy of Power to show the history of the Power Rangers. Yes. Because the thing is, Tommy had no way of getting all those viewpoints and exactly, point of view yeah. shots and all that other stuff. So his, the explanation is it was the morphing grid in which that Although came it's, from. it's a pretty funny mental image of Tommy hiding in a bush with a camera while the Wild Force <laughs> Rangers are fighting something. <laughs> Absolutely. But it's explaining why the morphing grid, um, he's able to view it through that. And then in the non-canon, or at least as I believe it is to be non-canon seen on the DVDs of, his, of uh, Dino Thunder, uh, where Ethan and Kira find a rock under... What was the name of their hangout in that? Yeah, uh, I forget. Yeah, they find it, and then they see 25 years into the future with the SPD Rangers, which was all Sentai footage, and then that was it. Mm -hmm. So this interpretation of the Morphing Grid, which I believe builds upon it in some way, uh, is the ability to have omnipresence. What, what do you think Again, of that? I, I like the idea, and that's, that idea has played into my attempt at explanations for Super Mega Force okay. and Gosei's awareness. Because remember we had a little discussion about, you know, why should Gosei be aware of the SPD Rangers? Is this tying into the magical iPad in any way? Yes. Okay, please proceed. <laughs> so this because this seemed to establish that the morphing grid is a physical thing. When Lord Zed's explanations seemed to have it as a more and, and, and not so much physical in this case. We'll get to that part later. Yeah. But more of a video recording service. Let's put it that way. Yeah, and it's in in this way. It's like a crystal ball that taps into the morphic grid itself and is able to look at all of these things connected to it. So that's how he's. So that's how they're able to view the exploits of the lost ga of the Galaxy Rangers all the way in Miranoi. You know. What actually does make sense about that is I did use the term viewing globe, which is what, of course, Zord I used in the first three seasons and in Zeo. So it almost seems reasonable that the morphing grid could be used as a tool in that regard. Yeah, and that, to, Tommy, that Tommy, after working under Zordon for so long, could probably come up with similar technology himself. It would make more sense for Billy, but we know how that turned out, and somehow Tommy became a doctor in less than six years. But in any case, it does justify... Uh, him having that footage in some way as opposed to making up something. What it does is it enriches something that already exists. Yeah, exactly. Which I like that to a degree, but we still don't have a full understanding of what the Morphin Grid is, even moving to our next point. Which um, is, this one's a weird one. Which is an Operation Overdrive. So in Once a Ranger, I mean, it's a I think it's established before Once a Ranger that they are using the Morphin Grid. I think that was in a line of dialogue. But... 
what Thrax does in Once Rangers cuts off the Overdrive Rangers connection to the morphing grid. Yes. Now he does this by first kind of like destroying their morphers, and then we have this. Uh, he he like shoots out a beam or something. Yeah, and we are taken to what I can only describe as like a tunnel in a it, way. You know what it looks like? Mm -hmm. It looks like. Have you seen Digimon the movie? Of course you have. Yes, yes. It looks like the that, internet, the, uh, yeah. the the interpretation of the internet, and that's the thing is like he destroys it's it. It's a very technical looking place. Yeah, he destroys it, and we actually get uh, Mr. Hartford showing us a damaged portion with like electrical sparks going everywhere, mm -hmm. and says the morphing grid is damaged. And then later in the later in the second part. Alpha, Alpha goes there. Yeah, I think it's Alpha 6 in this yeah. one. He, he's actually able to go in there and do something in the Morphing and Grid. which it. Yeah. And this is basically the idea that Morphing Grid is a physical place. And that it's also a technological place. And I don't know how I feel about that because here's the thing about the Morphing Grid that I always saw of. And let's go back to the first few seasons is that the thing about Z Zordon and Rita that I always felt, and I still believe to this day, is that they were both magic users. Yeah. But I, Zordon was able to integrate technology into it to be superior to Rita. Not unlike Beast Machines, where you had the fusion of organic and technology, and that's what ultimately won out against Megatron. Or, you know, to return to Star Wars, that's a perfect synthesis. The Jedi are the perfect synthesis of technology and mysticism. Exactly. So I always felt that it's Zordon's use of technology would allow him to go ahead and win. That being said, I don't. I always thought the Morphing Grid was a mystical, yeah, mystical I, element. You and I are on the same page here. I do not like the Operation Overdrive depiction of it because, first of all, it's a very technological place. What about the Galaxy Rangers? What about the Zeo Rangers? They're confirmed to be have magic powers, and yet they're deriving power from this big internet thing? The, the thing I've always looked at the morphing grid as is, um, you read Animorphs, right? Yes. Okay, so do you remember what, uh, I think it was Z-Space or G-Space? It's basically... Z-Space, yeah. Z-Space. That's basically where all the matter goes when you are morphing. So, like, if you train something smaller, mass gets placed in there. I always looked at this... Which has also been an explanation for how Transformers in G1 were able to transform into smaller things. Such really? As okay, that I was not aware of. Um, but, like, look at Trip, for example, from uh, Time Force. He always had back a backpack on him in that hat, but when he would morph, he would just have his suit. And this Or is the, the most egregious offender, Commander Kruger. Exactly. I always felt that it was, even though it was a mystical place or viewed as mysticism, that's where all the extra stuff would go, kind of wait around, and when you demorph, it like it switches mass, basic, mm -hmm. basically. I can't get too technical into it, because neither of us are physics majors or anything. Um, and mass transference, let's put it like that. Yes, um, and you could apply scientific reasoning to it, but it's still something mystical by nature, mm -hmm. I think. Because if we go back to Zordon's explanation, he utilizes technology. So the power coins are connected to the Morphin Grid, which is a mystical thing created by Ninjor, excuse me. Yeah. But then... Zordon developed the Morphers, which are technology, to manifest the power. Yeah, to use the dino, to utilize the dino coins. And he also built technology that draws on that, you know, the Zords. Yeah, and I only, I mean, I just look at it as the Morphing Grid is a, like a universal storage locker in a sense of that's where the weapons are. The weapons are, or they're, it's a transportation thing, like where they're yeah, transport between the two. Let's get back to our definitions here. Okay. There was, before we get to our last definition, there was another tiny reference mm -hmm. in Jungle Fury. Yes. Because RJ says, I was able to tap into the morphing grid when he gives the Jungle Fury Rangers their morphers. And that's really more or less confirmation that all Rangers are using the morphing grid. That if somebody like RJ, which, you know, I like RJ, but he's not the 
brightest crown in the box. Yeah. Uh, if he can tap into the morphing grid, then just about anybody can. Or, you know, it, it could be debatable if he even made those. Yeah, I mean, he's like somebody else. You know, it's like my sister, brother's cousin. I forget how it goes. But it's one of those Mel Brooks-like and it things. Also, it also gives a bit more credence to... Say the light speed rescue team yeah. in Aldermore. The, the, if one guy can do it, then just about any guy that is possible for it. humans to access it. Exactly. But but our last reference, and this, you know, this one's probably the most detailed. In, in a way, yeah, because um, the way the morphing grid is viewed in RPM, uh, or at least we assume it's the morphing grid, is that it is a uh, bio energy field made up of all. Living beings. Yes. Um, and of course, since RPMs are a scientific and technological driven one, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. Explanation. It would it would have that explanation, much like I guess midi chlorians. No matter how <clears throat> against that you get, you are, there's still a scientific explanation behind the force, much like the morphing grid is yes, now. Yes. Yes. Um, but what do you think of Dr. K's explanation? I I like it because. And it's the explanation that I hold hold to this day. Mm -hmm. I know that it can actually we can talk get to this later. But anyways, I like it because the Power Rangers are superheroes. Yep, and they are deriving their power from living things to protect the Earth, protect the universe, and so it's just very a very fitting thing. And it also makes more sense because. You know, it's it's not dependent on the good or evil balance. And also, it's not reliant on a physical place that can be damaged. Yeah, and, and the thing is, let's also clarify that they've never referred to it as the morphing grid. But based on its explanation and the way it actually powers the rangers in a way and allows them to morph, it's the morphing grid. Yeah, and in my own personal thought... it. It helped me to define, basically define how the Rangers are all connected. Because if with this explanation, you can look at every Ranger, just their supposed power source, actually be just being different ways of accessing the grid. The Mystic Force Rangers access it through magic. Yeah. The Lightspeed Rescue Rangers access it through technology. And, and I think what's really interesting is that since we later found out that RPM is in another universe and that Scott was able to morph here and then supposedly the other Rangers, Samurai Rangers, when they went to the RPM world, were able to morph, that it is cross-dimensional. Multi-dimensional, yes. Exa exactly, which I like that as well, that basically it exists anywhere and everywhere that's almost the only constant throughout the multiverse, if you want to put it that way. Yeah, and I like that idea too, because as you were discussing earlier, you were playing with the idea of the Mystic Knights of Tir Nanag being yeah. utilizing the morphing grid. Exactly. And, and again, I only bring that because it's Or the it's Big Bad part... Beetleborgs. Or the VR Troopers. Exactly. Although Ninja or... Turtles never did it. That's a shame. Yeah. <laughs> Keep them out of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, the, the, the whole thing about the morphing grid, um, in this context is that it was really described as exposition, mm -hmm. I think in RPM, but when we add that to all the other major interpretations of the morphing grid, I, I think it still leaves questions as to what it is, why it exists, because let's be honest, it's only used for morphing and powering zords. Yes. So, weapons, so yeah. basically, it's only for the benefit of Power Rangers. So, okay, look at the Force. We're going to go back to the Force because there uh, are a lot of yeah, parallels between yeah. the Force and the Morphing Grid. Let's be honest about that. The Force is not only for Jedi and Sith. The Force because everyone is, has midi chlorians. Exactly. It's also it's the degree of how many you have and, and mm -hmm. things like that. But it's something that guides the universe. It's the way the documentary explains it is kind of like a, a god of the Eastern religion, how everything has a spirit, much like Shinto. Yes, yes. And, and so I can b believe in the Force that way. But what is the morphing grid to the rest of the universe? 
Is it something that's guiding everyone's destiny? Does everything have a spirit like in a religion like that? Uh, or, or what is it? What do you quantify it as? I would guess that it, it doesn't have some semblance of will like the Force does. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, to go off of Dr. K's explanation that it's bioelectricity generated by every living thing, mm -hmm. that it's simply there, if that makes sense. I, I guess, so. I mean... It, think it, of it like a star. A star has no will. Mm -hmm. It's just a huge source of energy mm -hmm. that can be utilized. So that's what I think the Morphin Grid is. It's there, it's ethereal, so you you know you can't just walk out, look outside and see Morphin Grid energy. Yeah. It's ethereal, but it's there, and it takes morphine technology or you know morphine power to access it and that's what's used to power ranger forms and you know i would love to be able to see more explanation of the morphine grid in the future and you know the thing is let's tie it in the super mega force yes because it helps smooth over a lot of Weird kind of things. Not necessarily, because I still think we need an explanation for the origin of the keys. Here's the thing. If I got a good explanation for the origin of keys, or really any explanation, then I think I could be. it'd be easier for me to connect it to the morphing grid. And it's still a morphing grid, let's be honest. But are the, here's the thing. So let me just use an example. Let's use Tori's key from Ninja Storm. Okay? All right, all right. The key that's being utilized in the in the command center is not the key that Noah is using. It's basically a little statue to, that glows and like powers the key or something to make it active, is what I'm guessing from the four episodes we have seen. But has Tori lost her powers yet? That hasn't been explained yet. So does that mean she has her morpher on her and like the power is being redistributed through the morphing grid to Noah to where she can't utilize it. Hmm, okay. Because that, that is a that is a very good question. Because that would at least make some sense that Gose doesn't have the keys that he's drawing the power. And if we are talking about being multi-dimensional, and let's also assume it can travel through time, then that could be a better explanation for or the time force, the SPD Rangers, but also the RPM Rangers. Exactly. Uh, that he is just He's siphoning power from the other Power Rangers. And it would actually be interesting to know if, he's, if he is doing that, is he doing it against their will or without their knowledge? Well, consider it like this. What if we assume Gosei's keys mm -hmm. are similar in nature to Tommy's device that he had for viewing the Power Rangers? That Gosei has the technology or the powers to tap into the morphing grid to to call on the powers of these rangers, and he's able to funnel the powers into these little keys. Well, yeah, I mean, I know and he has access to the morphing grid in the sense of, again, the morphing and the magic iPad, because, again, magic iPad is the same thing Tommy had back in Dino Thunder, pretty much. Yeah, and so... I mean, it's a reasonable explanation, I'd like to think, but until we get confirmation on it, because... Going back to just like Super Mega Force in general, the whole idea of this morphing is a little but confusing. To, to go off of the I, yeah. to go off the question that you raised, are they depriving another Ranger of power? In some cases, I mean, Tori's debatable, but say the Dino Thunder Rangers, their access, their means of accessing the grid are destroyed. So, Gose is the only one able to use those powers. Well, also keep in mind that when they went back and when they went to SPD and went back in time, they regained their powers. Mm -hmm. And because the paradox is, they lose their powers and somehow the down gems get to Onyx, <laughs> and then Broodwing finds them, uses them, and the Rangers take them back in time to use them, only to lose them All again. Right, well, at Onyx. Let's, then, so they, I mean, they're... let's look at the Ninja Storm Rangers then. Yeah, because they lost their powers. They regained them temporarily and then lost them again. Did they lose them at the end of their they crossover? Did. Yeah, because they used it at the they lost them at the end of the crossover. Okay. Which kind of just smoothed things over for the rest of Dino Thunder, because you know it's like, why aren't the Ninja Storm Rangers helping? Which is the big explanation every season. And but you know, you can make the you can make the argument that Tori kept hers after Sentinel Knight returned them. 
At, well, he said temporarily. I think. Oh, he did. Him. I think it was. Te- I think that was the, the the scapegoat in there. But uh, oh, I don't. I didn't remember him saying temporarily. Well, I'll have to that. to double yeah. check that. But from my recollection, that's what he I said. I just thought he just said I've restored their powers. Okay, but I thought it was temporarily restored. But in any case, I, you know, the the whole thing is is that they probably. Let's look at the power coins. The power coins were destroyed. The ninja coins we know were turned into gold dust. Uh, the dino coins were were destroyed. were destroyed, and it depends on the degree of being destroyed as being cracked or broken or yeah. something like that. But I'm still willing to believe that there is access to those powers, or that the powers could still reside in the morphing grid. It just yeah. depends on where you think the power source is. Is the power indeed in the coin? Is it in the key? Is it in the disc? Where is it exactly? I would guess that when a ranger form is created, Mm -hmm. so a set of suits and a set of powers, that it makes an impression in the grid. And and let's look at, you know, the ever-popular pink energy joke. All right, all right. That it causes trouble for two of the same impressions to exist because it's just... The Morphing Grid has one impression of that power. Mm -hmm. And then we'll skip ahead to Dino Thunder. The problems that were resulting from there being two White Rangers. Yeah, with the clone and Trent. That was causing trouble for the both of them. So, once that impression is made, that is how Gosei can give the Mega Force Rangers the power to turn into an exact copy of the Ninja Storm Rangers. Or... So it's not version. even actually being the actual Rangers, it's a copy of the Rangers. Yes. See, now that actually is a better explanation, I think, because while everybody's always claiming that the Super Mega Force, when we did our top most powerful Rangers, mm-hmm. people were saying Super Mega Force were the most powerful because they have powers of all the Everything. Rangers. But I have a couple of things I want to say about that at a later date. Nevertheless, I don't think Super Mega Force is and as so, powerful. Yeah, in this case, in that we case. can just say that. No, they're not more powerful than, say, the Mystic Force Rangers, because it's just a copy of the Mystic Force powers. and Because obviously they're not fully utilizing the powers that they have. But which, you, could all, you, you could know. also chalk bar that up for just un, unfamiliarity with everyone's powers. Although it is, in the Die Ranger case, they took on their fighting forms, which is, yeah, there, there are a lot of things about that. But that was a problem with Gokaiju, too. Not necessarily, but, I mean, we could do a whole podcast probably and just go guide your eyes yeah, and itself. Also, I think something else worth mentioning, none of this theorizing that we have done can apply to Sentai in the slightest bit. Actually, absolutely, because let's just talk about this real quick and we'll go ahead and wrap up. Sentai, as far as I can tell, has never had a unifying source because if we apply, we can apply the morphing grid to, this, to the Power Rangers, but in Super Mega Force, the powers themselves are individualized and then formed into keys. Mm-hmm. So when you hold a key, such as I'm holding Go Go 5 key at the moment, Green Ranger if you're curious, um, all the power has been molded into that key. That's where the power exists. But in Power Rangers, it can exist in another universe, but, basically. You know, I would say that it's simply channeling that power the same way the Dino Coin channels that power. So, this blue Turbo Ranger that I'm holding in my mm-hmm. hand is just, it channels the impression from the morphing grid of the blue Turbo Ranger the same way that the blue Turbo Ranger morpher channeled that same power. And of course, in, in that instance as well, we can also... So, it's just a huge collection of little morphers. Yeah, and, and in that case too, like, look at Justin getting his power back from Storm Blaster. Yeah, it was his powers were not destroyed. He lost his means of accessing it. Then Storm Blaster had a spare morpher, had a way to access his powers again. Bam, Blue Ranger. Which is also, and I will bring this up real quick. I think that's exactly how TJ got his powers back after they rescued Lightning Cruiser. Yeah. So, with that in mind, it Power Rangers tries to keep to a unified continuity more so than Sentai does. Which is kind of odd since the writers don't really care half the time. It seems. Yeah, but with Sentai, they're mostly on their own. They come together when needed. 
And that was, of course, covered in our continuity discussion. Yeah. But I think to wrap up the whole morphing grid thing, I think what will have to happen is that I think somewhere down the line, whether it be in Dino Charge, Dino Supercharge, or a future series, uh, I would love to see an exploration of the morphing grid in detail. And by that, I mean essential to the plot, or that's what the plot is about. Um, yeah, honestly, the series we're on right now would be the best opportunity for that, but it's not going to happen probably. Well, that's what Super Mega Force is, squandered opportunity. So. <laughs> But Raptor, any final thoughts you have about the Morphing Grid? Just things that you didn't get to bring up in our general discussion? Mm. I mean, the biggest thing I wanted to bring up was tying the, you know, tying the impressions theory into Gosei. But So, accomplish that. Yeah, and I think that's all we have to say about it at the moment. But I'm very curious as to what our fans are going to go ahead and think about it. Because I've seen weird and wild theories throughout the years. I really haven't covered anything like that. Because you know how I am about a lot of speculation. Because I'm curious. What what was some of the weirder ones you saw? Uh, Just that... um, the the morph that the morphing grid I'm trying to remember how it was because it was the most absurd theory that I'd ever heard it, it was like it's made up of Power Ranger powers uh, that the Power Rangers like all the powers exist in the universe mm-hmm. and that the villains the reason they're not like destroying cities they're just focusing on destroying Power Rangers is that they have to destroy Power Rangers to destroy the morphing grid which is like this big uh, like tapestry oh, kind of thing. That kind of makes sense, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just, it was just weird. I don't know, but and it, it's, and it's important to note. Yeah, this entire podcast has been speculation based on a few tiny scattered references. Yeah, there's at least evidence to back up a, at least some of the things we said. Exactly. <laughs> but Raptor, I want to thank you again uh, for joining me and talking about this. Uh, we yeah, will... good to be back for a regular discussion. Absolutely, we'll we'll get back to some more here shortly. And I want to thank everybody for, for listening here today. Keep your eyes out for some vlogs in the next few days. Oh, uh, yeah. We're cranking up those vlogs. If it wasn't for the render time, probably have a lot more. <laughs> but thank you guys for listening. Have yourselves a good night. And the tavern is now closed. <laughs>